So, settle in. Okay. Let's talk about the future of news, the state of journalism today, and why it is so important for our country and indeed for the world at large. I want to come back to part of our theme, that a free, truly free, and independent, fiercely independent when necessary press is the red beating heart of freedom and democracy. By the end of this section, I hope you'll see why and think about it. Challenging power, questioning authority, only strengthens this nation. It can strengthen any nation. That is the primary role of journalists, to constantly seek out the truth, or as close to the truth as it's humanly possible to get, no matter how uncomfortable that might be, especially for people in positions of power. I've spent my life working in American television, so if you come to this class from another country, the context about what you're going to hear is about my experiences in the United States, but it certainly could be applicable to many democracies and would-be democracies, hope for democracies around the world. The question at hand is why journalists are important in a democracy. I believe that one of the most important functions of journalism is to seek truth and speak truth to power. In other words, uncover knowledge that the powerful have, information that the public needs to know and has a right to know. You know, I'm reminded that one of my favorite quotations about journalism, I wish it was my quotation, but it isn't, but it goes roughly along these lines. News is what the public needs to know, that someone somewhere, particularly someone in power, doesn't want the public to know. That's news. All the rest is pretty much advertising and propaganda. Now, in our current political climate here in the U.S., the question is whether journalism can continue to seek truth and speak truth to power. I've been working in the news for, what, almost 70 years now, and never has this question in its fullest dimensions seemed less like a rhetorical question than it does right now. So why should you care about the fate of the news? Journalists have a professional stake in the news, that's understood. But are there reasons why citizens at large should care about the future of the reporting of news? As self-evident as it may seem to answer with a ringing affirmative, getting the public to see that answer is yes, underscore it, italicize it, put it in bold with all caps, is probably the central challenge that those of us who care about the news must confront in order to ensure the future of our profession and craft. News that can and does seek truth and speak truth to power. When people in the news plead for the preservation of quality news of integrity, we journalists are, of course, speaking out of something beyond self-interest. This is not just another business sector in jeopardy. This is an integral, perhaps the integral piece of our democratic infrastructure that's groaning and shaking and giving signs of possible collapse, like the United States Bank bailout a few years ago. Today's press is in the red. It is the beating heart of democracy and freedom, and it simply cannot be allowed to fail. I use the word press to refer to news delivered in all media because Press serves as a reminder of the U.S. Constitutional and Bill of Rights protections and the implied responsibilities of journalism in our democratic republic. It was not for nothing that this nation's founders placed freedom of the press right alongside freedom of speech and freedom of religion in the very first amendment to the U.S. Constitution, right up at the top of the Bill of Rights. So, why is the press so important, and why should you care about what happens to it? Well, at the most basic level, a self-governing people needs information in order to govern. You need to know what issues are up for debate before Congress, say. 
before state legislatures and city councils. You need to know that in order to be an active member of the country. You need to have impartially sourced information about all of those issues. And we need a means for distributing this information broadly in what the U.S. is, a huge continent-spanning nation of very diverse ethnic, social, religious, and economic makeup. At a more crucial level, and this is where the role of a competitively healthy and free press becomes truly indispensable. Democracy and freedom also require the press to act as a check on power, as a balance to power, to ferret out corruption in government, to bring to light issues that the powerful would rather not address, and in that famed quote about the role of a newspaper, to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Now, what does that mean? Well, let's look at the coverage of the great storm called Hurricane Katrina. When it hit New Orleans in 2005, the press coverage showed the world the depth of the devastation, a scale of human misery seldom seen before, at least in the United States. And during the recovery from Hurricane Katrina, it was the press that reported on hundreds of stories of storm victims who had been taken advantage of in the most desperate of times. The founding fathers here in America did not carve out a central place for the press in our republic because they loved journalists. <laughs> like many politicians, then and now, they did not. But they did it because they loved freedom and democracy and they knew how important a free press was to forming that and sustaining it. As Thomas Jefferson once wrote, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free, it expects what never was and never will be. This is the message that those who care and care deeply about the state of news reporting today absolutely need to convey to a broader public if a free press, as we have known it, is to survive in America and take root in other places. And by extension, if freedom and democracy as we know them are to survive in America or anywhere else. Only once that message is disseminated, digested, and heeded will we have a chance of beating the core challenges facing the press.